public forum today, um, Haramai Trevor Say. Trevor is going to talk on the Marlow Street Cycle Lane Petition. Welcome to the table. Uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Trevor McSay. Um, I'd like to thank the Council for this opportunity to present my petition um, from the Dunedin uh, residents. Uh, requesting our roads in St Kilda to be put back to the way they were, um, back to the two-way traffic flow, um, the way they were before the cycle way was introduced. Um, we did not receive any information about these changes, neither did the majority of the residents who signed this petition. Out of the 657 people, there was probably about a dozen um, that received information about the proposed changes. Um, I live close to the end of Marlow Street, which has been made a one, one way. Um, if I had been informed about these, um, this change, like road change, um, I would have um, petitioned about it. Um, Marlow Street used to be free flowing, um, two way road before it was made a one way uh, for um, construction of the new um, cycleway. Um, as a parent, I use Marlow Street daily to take children um, to and from school. Um, there's a lot of other parents in the neighbourhood making Marlow Street one way as in hundreds of motorists daily. Quite nervous about this, sorry. That's fine. Okay. Um, about 400 motorists could be using this day, road daily. Um, we believe the effect could be returned back to the original road layout and still have the cycleway. cycleway. Excuse me. Um, these new changes in our neighbourhood have made the journey from central Dunedin longer and has inconvenienced many parents of students travelling to and from nearby schools. Um, the consultation from the Dunedin City Council on this cycleway um, was inadequate as only a few residents received information on this proposed change. When we rang the Dunedin City Council Roading Department to discuss these changes to Marlow Street, um, we were told that these new road layouts were here to stay, no matter what um, you say or do. The DCC was not going to change these roads back. Um, the DCC was not open to any feedback from residents. Um, I was willing to meet with DCC staff and spokes with Dunedin about this and still waiting for this meeting. Um, if heard of knowing about the consultation period, um, we would have supported the cycleway but opposed the decision to block off the streets and some of the other changes in the area, like the blocking off of Rugby Street, the blocking off of Marlow Street, which was the main thoroughfare, the loss of car parks surrounding the sports ground, um, and Royal Crescent. Um, we had a lot of angry sports members wanting to sign the petition and we had to take more papers to them. Um, speed bumps on Victoria Road, caught, which caused discomfort to drivers who are suffering from injuries, even at a low speed. Um, res residential, uh, residents would like the removal of the curb at the camp store on Victoria Road um, as the cycle lane is right outside the door of the dairy, which this is a very dangerous place to walk out of the shop. Um, another question came up during the petition was, if Musselborough Rise has a cycleway with no speed bumps, why does Victoria Road get four of them? Um, we feel the council has undermined it, under, underhanded with the lack of consultation they have. Uh, they should have allowed more feedback by knocking on residents' doors like I have, um, pamphlets in the, or at least a letter in more than just a dozen mailboxes um, would have given the res residents a fair say. Over 600 people have signed my petition to say they would like the roads back to the way they were before the cycle lane was introduced. Our concerns with the new road layouts are um, the safety of the kids crossing the roads, um, we've had a fair, fair near, near misses with kids crossing the roads because they're not used to the new road layout. 
um, emergency vehicles, couriers, taxis will now, will now take longer to get here. Um, four blocks further to get to our place um, with all the new changes. We ourselves have to drive four, four, four blocks out of the way just to get it um, around the, the new one-way streets. Um, we have taggers in our streets now. Um, almost every fence um, has been tagged um, in this now quiet street. <coughs> um, boy races are run, running up and down at a great rate of knots along the um, Royal Crescent <coughs> as they have no giveaways or stop signs in the street anymore. Um, could you please listen and make the changes back to our roads as requested by the 657 Dunedin residents who have signed my list petition? Thank you, Trevor. Can I just um, ask at the top of the petition, I just want to make sure that we are clearly up. Sorry, Andrew. Can you hand that back? I'm just going to ask him to read <coughs> the actual wording that was on your petition for clarity, because I think you had it in your speech, but I, it's just normal that we actually get the wording of the actual petition. Uh, petition to the Dunedin City Council to return our roads back in St Kilda, back to two-way traffic flow. This was before <coughs> the um, work on Victoria Road was actually started. Okay. We're not done this. Um, the affected roads, we've got Marlow Street, Norman B Street and Royal Crescent. But Rugby Street should have been added into that. Well. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, sorry, thank you very much. I just want to make sure we knew what was the position. Um, do we have any questions? Oh, Trevor, are you happy to take some questions from the council? Yeah. Thank you. Councillor, oh, sorry, Mary language we got, so we'll try and say they had to help it. Um, a couple of things. One of them is other people who have signed your position, petition, mostly people who live yes. in the area, so you've sort of targeted people who live in the area. So. In the area from Queen's Drive. I've had the odd one that emailed me or texted me from Pine Hill and other areas of town that don't like the trainers. And do you have any idea whether they ride bikes or whether they are almost all um, in cars when they're thinking the yep. bad thing, as it were? Some of the people that did sign the petition were cyclists themselves. Um, and I've said to them, I'm got no qualms with the, the cycle way itself, it's just the way that it's blocked off the streets. I think <coughs> the cyclists and the motorists can actually share the roads. Um, cyclists can have to give away the stop signs as well. So you'd have, would the people who you've talked to as far as you can see be happy to have cyclists directed along those roads so long as they weren't made into one-way streets and things? That would. I think they'd be quite happy if they could get our roads back to the way they were and as well as share it to the cyclists. Yeah, uh, Trevor, you said, if I remember rightly, that you have to go an extra four blocks to get to yes. your place now. Yep. Um, I've got a pretty good idea of the sort of the, 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 the roading grid that's out there, and I can't see where you'd get four blocks. I can think of maybe two at the most. Because um, where we are, we have, um, we're on Marlow Street South, and we're only yeah. a block away from this, this intersection where it's changed. <laughs> the way that it's been roaded, we still have to go around four, four blocks just to get home. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> so if I'm taking my daughter to school, for example, um, I used to do a circuit um, up the back of Bakewood High School, and go down the two blocks over to the next street, go down that street, and then come back over an extra two blocks just to get home. Yeah, okay, maybe I haven't got as good an understanding of the, of the situation as I thought I had. It, it's just that I need a map there, it's just to sort of figure it out. Um, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't show there. It, it doesn't matter. I, I mean, I accept if you say four blocks, yeah. that, then that is the case. Yeah. Um, I just couldn't figure that out myself. Yeah. Well, it actually looked like um, Normal um, near the Normal Street was actually going to be closed off, but when we were in the council, they said no to it, and it's, the work has seemed, seemed to have stopped there. So.
Um, thank you very much for coming and presenting today. Um, there must have been quite a bit of work in 657 signatures. Did you door knock the areas basically to get those signatures? Um, I dropped some off at some of the shops and areas in the area. Um, mentioned some of the courier companies, um, taxi drivers as well. Got very little from the taxi drivers, but most of them were door knocking in the weekends and. Okay. Now, um, having once a long time ago done some door knocking myself, I, I recognise 657 people signing up is actually quite an achievement. You have to catch them home for a start and, and whatever. Um, the, of the 657 that signed, have you got a feeling for what proportion of the people that lived in that area, what proportion of the people um, basically signed up, what proportion wanted it back the way it was? I would say, say probably 90% of um, people supported it. Right. Um, there was quite a few not at home at all. Yes. And there was probably a dozen that said no, they were quite happy with the way it was. Okay, so there were a dozen people that were supportive of the way it was, or they were just happy to, 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 to let it go? Um, there's a dozen people at least that were happy that the way it was okay. um, with the straight block but 90% of the others were against it. Alright, and did you record the, um, the, the dozen that, that were supportive? Did you make a note of them as well, or have you just... Um, no, you just count them. Count them as you went through. Okay, thank you very much, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron? Uh, thanks, Madam Chair, and thanks for coming to speak to us. I'm, I'm interested in your comments about graffiti. Um, you said that there's tagging now on every house, and you're implying that it's because of these roadworks. Um, the tagging come after the road was actually blocked, um, and now the lower part of Marsh between um, Royal Crescent and Queen's Drive, um, very little cars use it now because there used to be two-way traffic. Um, so the taggers are out there just tagging every, every second fence, pretty much. Um, so there was none before. There was none before before the road was closed. Um, there's a lot quiet street now. Um, there's very little tree traffic at all because everyone is going in other directions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Um, the question, the question that I have is clearly um, the way that your daughter gets to school is up to her and up to you. But um, the I guess the intention of the network is to provide a safe way for people to get to and from places by bike. And um, it would appear that there will eventually, or there may already be, um, a cycleway that goes all the way from your door, a safe cycleway that goes all the way from your door to Bayfield High School. Um, but your daughter has no interest in, no interest in using that. No, right? no, she doesn't ride bikes at all. Thank you. No other questions? Thank you very much. I'm oh, sorry. With the uh, closure of the um, coming into Marlow Street, do you think a speed bump would have done the job just like on Victoria Road? Um, I have discussed that with my wife and that, and we think with the speed bump being there, it will slow the traffic down through um, Marlow Street. Um, give way to probably even stay there. It's just bringing the slow plane traffic back along Marlow Street. But a speed bump with the two-way traffic would have sufficed? Would have I think it would have, yes. It doesn't, doesn't need um, right out the trees into the road at all. So, Madam Chair, the last one, please. Just to support uh, Trevor's comment here. Yeah. It, it's, um, we're really running late, and if you put your name forward to speak here, or you one of the petitioners, I'm one of the petitioners. With a leave, I'd rather be democratic than, than not. So I hope that everyone is happy with that. Thank you. Um, yeah. Come and speak at the table, please, so we can all hear you into the microphone. I think I'm loud enough. <laughs> okay. uh, my name is Simpson. I live at uh, 40 Marlow Street. But just to go back on the point of uh, Councillor Wiley, um, what my family would like to see is the uh, <clears throat> the speed hump allowed to remain two-way. There's been some um, 
slight civil disobedience, and uh, you would have may recall in uh, recent days a photo of uh, Trevor with some orange bollards that have been placed on the left hand side uh, heading towards um, Queen's Drive. Uh, there is sufficient width to retain two way traffic uh, on that um, speed hump on that portion of Marlow Street and um, my family uh, and many others would prefer that it's open to two way traffic and that will uh, sustain our requirements because it will be slow. Uh, this, the uh, stop or no entry marking can be substituted by a speed hump, which is uh, further along the adjacent street. <coughs> There's no need to shift any curbing. Um, admittedly, it's, it's mildly narrow, and it may not uh, meet the current requirements of uh, regulation, but from a practical perspective, because the speed hump is there, one crosses it very slowly, so there's sufficient carriageway to sustain both vehicles. If there's a lorry that has to come, obviously a car will have to uh, stop uh, on the other on my side of um, Marlow Street to, to allow it to proceed with the load. But I, I think we've, we've stuck with the cycleway, um, but what we really want is two-way access on Marlow Street through that um, narrowing. And as I said, the, to repeat myself, the speed hump is there. There is sufficient carriage for, uh, for both uh, lanes and cars to move. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Trevor. Right. So, um, can we just get your details? No, oh. I didn't first name. What's your first name, please? Barry. Barry, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm, uh, no, Robert Cunningham, we all get handed out. Um, Robert Cunningham has had to leave. He's got some notes that he's asked to have shared. They'll be sent out to you uh, shortly. <coughs> um, so, how am I, Sue, who is From some hospitality, I think. I think we're still five minutes, if that's all right, and we'll try and keep you to that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for letting me speak at this meeting. Uh, as you said, I'm from Southern Hospitality and we're looking at Package 4, which is the concept for the Harborside Route 10, Portsmouth Drive, Portsmouth Drive, Birch Street. I'm not sure if you're aware of Southern Hospitality, but we provide all the products, many of them in front of you, to all people who manufacture food, whether they be cafes, prisons, hospitals, stadiums, etc. Our head office is here in Dunedin. We're 14 branches throughout New Zealand and three in Australia. I understand we're the biggest hospitality supplier in New Zealand. To give you some idea of size, we employ 370 people. Our annual turnover is over $100 million. And we land between six and eight containers of product a week. Unfortunately, not into Dunedin. Um, our business is one of the larger employers in this affected area, which is the Kitchener Street uh, Wharf Street series. We have about 40 staff in Dunedin and in addition to head office administration we operate a cash and carry showroom from the premises in Roberts Street. Some of our customers use the overbridge to Robert Street access as do staff servicing accounts in the southern city area. We've looked at the options and especially option one proposed for the movement of road users safely within the area surrounded by Kitchener and Wharf Street. Our concerns are the retention of our business in the area, i.e. loss of customers due to perceived lack of access. Access from the overbridge to Robert Street can at peak times be challenging if any of you try to do it, as traffic tends to, in the 60k limit, not really look at 60k, coming down the overbridge and coming along Wharf Street as they merge, which can prevent people from turning into Robert Street at non-peak times from about 8.30, 9 o'clock on in the morning when there's not so much traffic, there is no issue. The safety of cyclists is improved with option one, but still incurs some danger crossing two rather busy intersections on, this, on um, Wharf Street. The current, at the moment, there is congestion, con sorry, <coughs> congestion at Birch Wharf Street intersection, and if the closing of Robert Street goes ahead. This will markedly increase at both lunch times and evening hours, resulting in increased driver frustration. We also note that the trees and shrubs on the right-hand side obscure vision for turning right. Traffic at the Kitchener Street, Wharf Street, in the mornings would be increased where cycles will be required to cross the roads, hence offering another issue for cyclists. Access through the internal industrial area that's behind Robert Street includes intermittent heavy traffic during work hours. 
We're concerned about the repercussions on businesses and are likely to be incurred by critical customer access to the area has been reduced. Few would know that the access is available via Kitchener Street and would likely see the in increased distances confusing and even annoying. Some of the suggestions that we've looked at, and no, we're not experts in this field, but trying to find a middle ground and make sure that it's safe for everybody, is to use the cycle lanes currently provided on Kitchener Street, or better still, to modify these to provide a dedicated dual cycleway on the harbour side, separated from traffic, separated from parking. In a really rough estimate, and it is really rough, we would estimate this adds approximately 150 metres to the current phase of one option. It also could be, and I don't know, a lower cost option as build outs would not be required. The cycles would be totally removed from traffic. <coughs> one area we would like people to consider is reduce the speed limit of merging traffic coming off the Jetty Street overbridge and Wharf Street to 50k, they can then do 60, probably, and reinstate the 60k limit after Portsmouth Drive, Strathallan Street intersection. This would obviously require education and policing. If the cycleway on Wharf Street continues to be used, what we would like to see, seeing as we probably use it ourselves quite a lot, that cyclists be encouraged to stop or give way at the intersections, because with double traffic in both directions, and cyclists with their heads down, disappearing in a straight line, they are sometimes difficult to see, although there have been no accidents at the uh, Robert Street, Wharf Street intersection. Again, this would require increased, perhaps, road level signage, seeing as most of the signage is positioned fairly high on lampposts and cyclists are looking down. I'm not convinced that they actually see it. It would need an educational program in policing. As far as our company is concerned, we've been under pressure for a long time from our shareholders to move our head office to Auckland. Until now, we have managed to resist this. But with any decrease in our cash and carry sales, I'm not sure that our directors would agree with us staying in Dunedin, and it could end up with losing between 30 and 40 jobs in the Dunedin area. Pending the results of the proposed changes, at the moment we have put a $200,000 upgrade of the premises on hold and delayed the introduction of a graduate program in Dunedin in case we are forced to move. As a company operating in the, in the city successfully for 25 years, we need to retain or would like to retain the current access via Robert Street to keep our business in Dunedin. Thank you. Thank you. And can I just ask a question first? I shop at your fashion carry. Um, you do? Fantastic. Keep coming. <laughs> um, but I have to say that I don't go out by, I mean, the, the, as a car driver, I find it a really safe, uh, unsafe intersection and I treat by choice not to go out onto um, Portsmouth what? Drive, but I go Port down Street. to Birch Street mm. because I find that other intersection quite scary. Um, and very bad for visual. So, if it wasn't even for the cycleways, if we weren't even talking cycleways, ha ha now how do your staff exit? I mean, I think you're. I would say hard to put on a percentage of it. Um, and I think having talked about it, those people that have vehicles that actually move at a at a at a rate versus puddle across the street, there are rules you have to have. You have to be able to have an absolutely clear exit. During the day, it's not a problem. At night, you will find a lot of people that work there will drive down Wharf Street and do a rather interesting U-turn into somebody's premises, like they're pretending to visit, turn around and go back out, which is not necessarily a good idea either. I'm not sure how legal that is. Okay. Um, and, and just the perception, and the, if it was a Southern Hospitality van that had, didn't have an accident there, regardless of cycles, how that perception would be taken? by you guys? Or have, has there ever been an accident? No, that, as far as we're aware, there hasn't been an accident at this intersection. Not yet, yeah, okay. Just been a little bit. Hillary. Okay. Um, two questions. Here's the... <laughs> Here's the nice piece of paper. Here's yep. the map. Is that 11.9? Uh, it's 11.9. Thank you. Are you <coughs> suggesting, as your preferred option, that the blue line keeps going 
go <coughs> down Kitchener Street and then comes up Birch Street. I even have a, one with a yellow line on it. Ah. So, yeah. That one. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, oh, now that's a little challenging. Um, <laughs> passes around and people can at least look. So then it's, it's running a, a continuation of the... Yeah, and it would have avoided... As it goes along Kitchener, Kitchener Street, keeps going there and up Birch Street, so around <coughs> that. Goes right around there. At the moment, there is a, a, a cycle lane on either side of the road, and yes, it is on the far side of parking, so you've got footpath, vehicle, cycle lane, driving. If you could... And I have no idea of the cost or the possibility, but if that ran as a dedicated two-way cycle lane on the harbour side of the road. It doesn't look like it actually is a lot more increased than this, having tried to measure it. And, it, and in fact, maybe would be actual time taken would be not much more. They could go, you're not they could go faster. Yeah. And there's, there's absolutely no crossing of roads <coughs> that way. I don't know if it's feasible. So, and your suggestion that if it didn't feel friendly enough, you may, it just could reach a tipping point about being yeah. encouraged to move north, um, I'm presuming. It's hard, it's hard yeah, to convince um, people that didn't even a place to stay. Yeah. Um, would that be more likely to happen, or how much more likely, if the Kitchener Street, the, that yellow line, um, happened, or would the other suggestions you were making as a fallback position be enough I, so, think, I would think, seeing as you have a cycleway here already, telling people it's completely gone, it's, you know, they're probably not going to agree. That, but when they cross these intersections, it appears that the road rule is going to apply. Yeah. And nobody wants to hit a cyclist. I bet nobody's that silly. <laughs> the fallback of, of the black line needs. Um, with with some modifications here, would, if not satisfy you, sort of ameliorate the concern enough possibly to, to retain? To retain. Yeah. I don't know the company, but... Thank you. Richard? We're all guessing. <laughs> Richard? Um, I just want to clarify for my own peace of mind. Um, if, if your customers are coming from the South Dunedin uh, end of the city. <coughs> yeah, or the southern end of the city. Southern, southern yeah. end like of the city. It's from the exchange yeah. through to... To Musselboro or wherever. No, too far then. Musselboro, you'd probably use Portsmouth Drive. Well, no, my, my, my point is if you're coming from, if you're coming from the south, <coughs> your access to Robert Street essentially doesn't change, correct? Correct. So if you're coming from Musselboro, if you're coming from the southern end of the city, if you're coming over the overbridge, mm. yeah, and we have not taken a list of a survey of customers saying where do you come from so, uh, at this guess, point in time. Okay, but if you're coming from that side, the access doesn't change. If you're coming from the northern end, the access doesn't change. The access doesn't change. So um, I'm just kind of. I'm a bit, to be honest, I'm a bit confused as to what is what you see as going to change here that is going to affect your business. People utilising the overbridge, who could be coming, could just be the way they happen to come, over the overbridge and then turning left into Robert Street. And you don't see your business as being um, substantively a destination business that when people got into their car, that's where they were going. I mean, they're not randomly driving around looking for a hospitality supplies place. They could change their mind and go to two of the opposition. They could go to Briscoe's, they could go to Aikens. And you really, you really they feel can. that? If they're purchasing this level, I mean, they're not going to come in and buy a $20,000 oven and take it out with them because it's a little bit large. But yes, they come in for what we would call small goods. Is it making it? 
the other um, the, the other issue that I'm trying to get my head around is I, I was out there this morning and I spent some time out there trying to get my head around what all these ghastly lines on maps actually meant in reality. Um, it, it, as you know, the existing cycle path going along there, um, and the um, I'm question. It can't have been that important. Has it? <laughs> <laughs> but if I, <laughs> do you agree? <laughs> I'll come back to it if I remember it. Oh no, you're answer for another question. <laughs> <It's probably> <laughs> it, it all depends. <laughs> um, thank you for your solution, for coming in. Um, like, can I just clarify, and I think this is some, maybe where Richard was going, but the, your, your main issue is the stopping of um, uh, left-hand turns off the overbridge into Robert Street. That's that would yeah. be your main issue. The, that would be the main issue, and right. then I mean you've got if you you've got the right-hand turn out, yeah, which is the, right the one that's not quite so safe. And the, that's right. Um, so th that being the and I and I am a I do have, interesting. I'm a customer of yours. I also drive through there, and I also cycle through there, and that is a really dangerous intersection. It's not nice. No, and it's dangerous both from the point of view of anyone coming along Wolf Street and having a car come off the overbridge and try and turn left into Robert Street. Mm -hmm. Forget cyclists, it, it can take cars out as well. And it's dangerous, as you say, for turning right out of Robert Street. So are you aware from our report that whether the cycleway goes through there or not, there is a strong reason to change that intersection for for motorist safety reasons anyway. It's got, I you think know, they're aware of that. that yeah. That's that's actually in the report. Um, so what I'm saying is, are you aware that because of the danger of the intersection, changes have been mooted for that, regardless of where the cycleway. And I think go. that that was where we suggested, and I think all of us having, because most of us would use that as an entryway that if the speed limit was dropped to 50k, it would possibly be safer. And it is only an issue, I mean, for, for most of us using it as we use it on a daily basis, the issue is first thing in the morning. From there on in, there's no traffic. You know, come nine o'clock, there's nothing. Yeah, um, and if you can't come across the road, then yes, one has to go down as far as Kitchener Street. Uh, Andrew. Let me just come off one question. The other question I had was, you've come along here today to talk to Council. Did mm -hmm. you take the opportunity to be involved in that Harborside Advisory Group or do you come under the Otago Real Estate? We came under the Otago Real Estate so and we were, we, we were a part of it, I believe, really, really early on and we have since had discussions. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for coming and speaking to us. If, as you suggest, a $2 million development, a graduate program, and the very existence of your business hinges on the decision that we make today, the right decision, in your words, and for that to be of any leverage, um, we should probably know what that right decision is. Is it your suggestion and a rejection of all four of these options, or would any of these be acceptable? Or I think it modified maybe some of some modification to it would be acceptable so none of again these. it would go back to the board yeah, okay. the, yeah it's not on there okay. the suggest yeah sorry the option is not there my funny little yellow line was there which i don't know if it's feasible or not feasible uh, Richard, did you, has your question been covered no, off? My, my question was covered by the mayor most admirably. to do with the, the yeah. existing <laughs> data. If you like. Oh, sorry, Doug, thank you. Would, would option four be acceptable? Sorry, I've just given my would option four away. No, I think you <coughs> would find that that option going through Buller Street goes past a lot of large trucks. And that was a question I was going to put to you. Yeah. Just to, my understanding is that the truck access to your place is... Um, We're off Buller Street. Street. Yeah, yes, and, so, and you have substantial truck access off there. I mean, how many truck movements are you talking about at a time? 
Um, I think we sit at about four or five a day, but there's others on the other side of the road that have much larger. There's a, there's a steel roofing company that tends to have larger trucks, and there are larger trucks back in the Kitchener Street area. Are there any other questions I've got to ask? One, sorry, Richard. <coughs> oh, your question. In, in essence, your, your concern is not... I'm sorry, this side, you can tell me right or wrong, but your concern is not so much where the cycle lane is, but in fact what the access is to Robert mm. Street. That's essentially yep. your concern. Um, and the heart, the heart of that concern is, I'm, I'm not sure whether there's a view that if the cycleway weren't going along Wall Street there, um, then um, those changes wouldn't happen at Robert Street. That access change wouldn't happen at Robert Street. Is that, that's, that's your that's, Yeah, that, I presume that would happen, that if there was, if, if the changes to option one, um, that then you wouldn't need to make those changes on Robert Street. Therefore, unless, you know, if you've still got a cycle lane and it's used <coughs> as a separate cycle lane and there will still be cyclists on it, if they gave way, perhaps weren't looking down all the time, I, I think it may be a, safer. I think that was a mess point that this would possibly happen regardless, some changes at Robert Street would be happen regardless of the cycleway and that there are safety concerns at the intersection. Now you've said, suggested one option to, to, to drop the speed limit. To drop speed limit, which is, with all respect, and I understand when, why you wouldn't know that, there's a tortuous process, but, <laughs> um, um, regardless of this, um, and, and, and can't generally be dealt with holistically, regrettably. Um, that's the local government issue that the government puts upon us, the oh. government, okay. But uh, the question I have for you is, and I think everyone around this table would cherish you, um, like you to know that we do respect your business and welcome it into Needham, is that if it was safer for all your customers, regardless of the cycleway, to actually not be turning left off from the west side coming over the Oak Bridge, but actually detouring, presumably in cars, down Kitchener Street, would signage alleviate some of your concerns? There would have to be signage and, and, because and people Street. wouldn't have a clue where Kitchener Street was. Well, well, well I mean, yeah, but well, one of the concerns is that a lot of the traffic coming off Jetty Street Oak Bridge actually has to change lane in a very short distance and turn left, and um, and they can't always change into Wall Street because there may be a car coming anyway. And, and, and we're off it could be. Street. So the question I have really is, would it be best for your business anyway? And I'm not quite sure what the district plan rules would say about it. But in order to get safe traffic, whether you'd be better to have um, last chance to visit um, Southern Hospitality at, 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 at the, Breen, the Greens Corner. I think that would affect a lot of business and it would probably require a council sign. I know, but would that be as part of the solution? It, it, it may work, work, but if you've never ever been down Kitchener Street and came, come the back way round, you would struggle to figure out which street to then turn around to find Southern Hospitality. Well... You would Presumably you've got the building at the back there that you could put signage on saying Southern Hospitality, equally. You'd have to come right back onto Kitchener Street. Well, yeah, well, you'd go down that, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, you'd yeah. go down the yeah. French Street. I didn't know it was called that before this. Yeah, no, I, I'm not, I don't think we can find a solution here, but I'm just wondering if you try to break down. Sorry, Lee. Um, I, I understand from the circular, circularised plan that the yellow line... Uh, for the cycleway would be your most preferred because it would have the least impact on your business. It would have the least impact and it would appear to be the safest as far as cycling is concerned. Right. Because there is, if it's dedicated, there's no traffic, there's no intersections. Okay. Now, um, regarding the, the Robert Street uh, intersection, I uh, concur that it is a bit on the scary side. Having said that, I always use it anyway. Um, there's a difference between a scary intersection and one that is actually unsafe. If you've got an intersection that is recognised as being scary, people are generally pretty careful there, and there may be no accidents. The other one I can think of is the bottom of Pine Hill, uh, which is so frightening, um, especially with trucks coming through. I'm just amazed there hasn't been any crashes there. But is there anyone here that can tell us what the actual accident rate has been on the Robert Street uh, Wall Street intersection. That, that will be a question, I, if you wouldn't mind holding that question for ISCOM itself, 
appreciating that we've now gone well over five minutes and we don't want to be, no, no, it's not your criticism. The fact is, I think it's great that, Sue, that everyone wants to understand your issues really well Thank and you. the seriousness we're taking it in. I'm going to, but do you mind holding Lee that question because I think it's fair to bring up at ISCOM. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah. Um, and, and reading proper. And I'm going to take the last question for this, Sue. Um, I'm give, respecting your business. We are taking it seriously. Well, my question, you, you, you probably sat through the last um, paper that we discussed in the last committee, which was about tr a trial. And I just, I wonder whether, given um, the fact that none of us know what the implications might be of what this this is, and we're hearing, we're hearing some things from, from you guys and some things from others, would a, a trial of an approach be an acceptable arrangement mm. to your board or your company for a period before we put something in? I think that would be a good idea. Thank Certainly. You. Thank you so very much for coming along and what? for your work, and I'm sure we're going to get a copy of that. I will, one. I will send that through to Pam tomorrow. Thank you very, very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my Tony Cook yes. from Alsons, who I think would we'll start off knowing where your business is, Tony, would be great. A big pardon. <laughs> Starting off knowing your location of your business on that yes. same map would be great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to put some points <coughs> to you. Um, uh, my name is Tony Cook, and Edison's Aluminium has been in, in operation for 25 years, almost that, that length of time in the, in that, in that, uh, at that address. It employs 40 staff in Dunedin, um, 100 staff uh, countrywide. The, um, the, the points that I wish to make to you, really, initially, we were very concerned with the complete closure of Roberts Street, Wall Street intersection. We, we then, and we had meetings and so on, and then subsequently uh, the revised plan indicated um, still some uh, access that way, but it, it unfortunately cut across the very access that we need to operate our business with large trucks delivering materials to our business. After a couple of meetings with, with um, the Dunedin City Council officials, I believe that we've reached a, a situation where um, the amount, the, the sort of, um, the islands and so on that were planned in the road uh, were, are now going to be reduced and the access for vehicles into that particular part of our, our property um, will, be, will be possible. And so the main reason for my initial concern uh, has disappeared. I, I trust that that is the case, talking to Lisa, that that is the situation. However, um, uh, I, I have put in a, a petition. There are only 116 um, signatures on there. Mainly, they, they come from staff. Uh, a few of them come from customers, not ours. But what I did was that I handed a petition to Sue. Um, and one to a company just next door to us, and, and then went round our staff. So the one petition, which my name is at the, at the top, is, is really just related to the fact initially that I was so concerned about the impact on our business. However, the petition is there, and it also then goes on to, to basically address the fact that there are other issues that come about because of the uh, reduction in, in access into Robert Street. And um, the, the concern there, if I could just go back to my notes now, having spoken extemporaneously like this, um, uh, what, what we would like to see, and which, which I think, Madam Chair, you, you <coughs> mentioned earlier on, was signage sufficient to redirect traffic. But really, people will see Ellison's, and you know, I have this picture in my mind of somebody traveling along and saying, oh, got to go and get some windows. I mean to do that, and haven't done. Now they can't get in there. So, you know, talk to your, your partner in the car, don't worry about it, now we'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow, they aren't in that street, they're actually where our opposition are. So they go in there. 
So it has a real impact on us, and somehow we need to address that particular aspect. So my suggestion would be <coughs> that we have adequate signage on that intersection where cars can't turn in there now. Um, and I agree with you that basically the, the only lane that is, it is, is at issue is, is the Jetty Street overbridge. That's the only one that, that affects us, as we spoke earlier on. It, but it's a, probably a third, arguably, of the traffic that we would have coming coming off the street. And of companies like Suze, there are a whole lot of people that feel very strongly about that particular aspect. So if we had signage that then told people how they could get to us, which companies were there, and how they should access us, I, I believe that that would solve that particular problem. With, in spite of the changes to the, to the intersection, there are still some hazards that, that remain there. Uh, the juxtaposition of, of the cycleway to really a raceway, because it really does seem like that to us. When we sit in our offices and look out there, the traffic is traveling at a hell of a rate down there. They accelerate as they hit the 60 kilometer speed limits on, on the overbridge. Uh, you can see when you, I, I mean, I travel there every day, and people start accelerating at that point. They, they make the bend, and they carry on accelerating uh, down, and it becomes almost a raceway, joined by the Wharf Street raceway as well. And I really feel very strongly that we, we, are, not, we are not putting, um, we are not putting in place the correct mechanism to control the conditions under which people drive there. It's a tiny road that we use as a bypass with big lorries traveling at 60 kilometers an hour. I, I just, and then we put cyclists next to it. And I just think that that is irresponsible, quite honestly. However, I understand that option one is the one that is, that is most favored. Uh, and so um, that, is, that is almost certainly the way it's going to be, but I would urge you to think about the, the speed limits on, on that road. I know that it's an arterial bypass, but it's, it's going to knock cyclists off. Really, we will, we will have some problems there. The other thing is that when somebody is turning right from Wharf Street into Roberts, Roberts Street, because of the speed of the vehicles, the, the, uh, and I, I do that, what I'm watching is for the gap from the two lanes that are coming at me there. I'm not looking over my shoulder here at a cyclist who doesn't stop in any case. For instance, I think, the, well, as, a, as, a, as an example, the concern I have is that the car starts turning because they see a gap and the cyclist is suddenly in the way and the cars are coming down. They're, they're going to hit the car or the car is going to hit the cyclist because of the speed. People will take the chance crossing the street be, and take that small gap knowing that the next time is going to be minutes away. So they take the gap and the cyclists could be there. It's, it's not a, it's not a good, good position at all. The, um, the Kitchen Street intersection as an alternative, so we're going to have much more traffic redirected that way, one way or another more traffic will go that way. And the concern I have there is that coming out of Kitchen Street, for instance, um, your line of sight for turning across Wall Street is actually no, no better than, than on, at, at the Robert Street intersection. So when you're at, in Kitchen Street and you're going to try and go across the road curves to the intersection of Strathallan, and so trying to cross that street with cycle with not so much cyclists now, not cyclists now because you take them round the other way, but with with traffic at the speed that it's going and more use of that intersection, I have a concern there. And it, it comes back to the point that the traffic is just traffic is too fast on, on that section of road. After Strathallan, you could, you could um, increase the speed again to 60, but I really believe that before then, we actually have a very dangerous situation. And if we haven't had any accidents, we have seen some minor accidents occurring, not, not any serious accidents, but it, it's all speed related. Thank you, Charlie. Are you going to take some questions? We're going to try and keep yes. it brief. Yes. What sort of accidents 
other ones that you've seen, are they car on car, truck on car, or car, the, car on bike? They, they're car on car. They, I haven't seen any cyclists affected. Okay. Bearing in mind that they are also speak anecdotally, you know, uh, uh, from what other people have, have told me. Okay. Okay. And how do you, you, I think you heard previous questions and debate, um, how do you feel about the trial in put in place to see how they work? Uh, well, on the basis that there's, that there's often nothing so permanent as a temporary job, we, we need to we need to have a, uh, an end mm -hmm. time to it. Yeah. Hello. Just a brief question. You said that some of your <coughs> concerns were allayed um, by proposed changes since the, part the petition that you put around. You, yes. we, we, we went, no, 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 we went from a stage where the Robert Street intersection was going to be closed completely to the next, um, the next scheme showed limited access, which is probably the one that you've got there. I just wanted to know whether the one we've got here is the one that you are now relatively yes, satisfied, option, option satisfied one, about. Option, option one, I'm saying, okay, option one seems to be the favoured one. So on that basis then there is a limited access, there was limited access, to my premises. That I've sorted out with Lisa and I believe that that is, that is all okay now, which is where the petition started, the petition started, but, but I've put it in anyway. So this is... Yeah, so option one there is the one that I, I, I see is going to happen. I'm accepting it. I actually believe that Sue's up here is much the best. The one with the yellow line going around. So in, into Kitchener Street. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Per person, I think, that's much better. Tony, um, I just want to clarify, you mentioned, talked about the danger of, say, trucks at 60k running alongside cyclists. I take it you mean when the cyclists are crossing <coughs> Robert Street? Yes, it is, and, and also, Mr Mayor, the, the fact that there are just, um, the, the approach speed, is, yeah, no, is, is enormous. So if anybody makes a mistake... No, I appreciate that. Yeah. But, and I take it that you mean even if the intersection were changed as under option B, yeah. there would still be a danger to cyclists crossing Robert Street from motorised traffic coming up Porth, or into town up Portsmouth Drive and turning right. That's, is that the other thing you're saying? A, a real concern for me because it's over their shoulder here and they're not looking no, at right. that. They're looking I just wanted to clarify that because, yeah, yeah. because that's, that's what my, um, my observation is that cyclists are indeed meant to stop, but um, from personal experience, yeah. uh, we really do, but it is a very dangerous yeah. intersection for both. For both. I, I, I guess with that, that island that is proposed in the middle, if, if there was a way, for instance, in, in which cyclists could be made to pause there, then, then the the issue that I'm raising would largely disappear. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening.